some bad news from the physician. My heart started pounding as I listened to what I was said. Cause in my head, I never thought it could happen to me. But I recall what I was taught in the 34th chapter of the book of Psalms. In spite of our afflictions, he'll deliver us from the all. My trust still lies in you. I know you're gonna bring me through, through this trial. It's gonna get hard sometimes And when those moments come I'll rest within your arms And give you praise for what's about to come No matter how long it takes I'll never give up my praise So while I wait, I'll be patient Praising you Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
to you this Sunday morning as we come again to the house of worship we might be here in the sanctuary might be in your home you might be outside in the garage outside in the backyard but wherever you are it's God's sanctuary today as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ where we are praise God from whom all blessings flow praise him this Sunday morning all creatures be low as we come on this day i want you to magnify the lord with me and let us what exalt his name together oh oh magnify the lord out south exalt his name out north lift him up on the east side Lift him up higher on the west side. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And what? Let us exalt his name. What? Together this day, Sunday, November the 15th, 2020. Claim it. There's victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Another week has passed. We have made it. Everybody hasn't made it this week. But if you made it, you're still here in the living, you need to shout out. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just say what? Lord, thank you. Thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. All right. Good to have our Wesley United Methodist Church family tune in, as well as our visitors. Mm -hmm. And if you are tuned in from outside of the Austin area and vicinity, type your name in and tell us where you are from. You might be from San Antonio, I don't know. You might be from Dallas, you might be from Houston, Beaumont, but type it in, your name and where you are from viewing us on this Sunday morning. You might be in New York, I don't know. You might be in California, but let us know where you are viewing us from. You might be down the road in Shirts, Texas. Just let us know. We just like to know now where our friends are and who they are here at Wesley United Methodist Church. God is good. All the time. Come on, and all the time what? God is good. Praise him. That everything that has breath, I don't care where you are, praise him. Amen, huh? Praise him. Lift him up. Let him know that he's what? Worthy to be what? Praise. Gracious God. Here we are. Here we are. And as we move on into our service, we always like to thank God. 
We like to pray and talk to him. Petition him. Ask him for help. Ask him for guidance. Ask him for healing. And I think we all stand in the need of what prayer. Whether we know that you stand in the need of prayer or not, you lift yourself up. Just lift yourself and say, Lord, I need healing. Lord, I need a clear mind. Lord, I need strength. Lord, I need help with my children. Lord, I need direction in my house. So lift yourself up in prayer. We don't know, but you know. God answers all of our what? Prayers. Does he not? God answers all our prayers. Glory to God. Let us all be mindful. We have lost another church member to death. Sister Linda Edison passed this week early. Early. Wow. Early, early Friday morning, Sister Linda, Linda Edison and the Lord got together and she departed on the 13th, 13th of November. Brother Horace Edison is asking for the, for the mighty prayers of his of his church family. He's asking for the prayers of all his church family, friends, and members of other churches, people out in the community. He said, he stands in the need of prayer. He said, Reverend, I'm hurting. Pray for all the family members. They prepare themselves for a homegoing service for Sister Linda Edison. Oh, glory. Oh, we have lost so many church members this year in 2020. Yes, we hurt, we grieve. Family members of yours that we don't know about have died and we are never, we are never ready to say goodbye. All right, all right, all right. Lift yourself up to the Lord. Call out to him right now what you need. Oh, Lord, for those who need strength. You got it. For those who need healing right now, Lord, you can make them well. For those who are searching, oh God, you can help them find their way. For those who are struggling, struggling with life right now, oh God, you can help them to overcome. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy upon us on this day. You have a way now, God, of humbling us. Some 240,000 people have died of COVID-19, oh God. And they are projecting even more are going to die from it, oh God. Come on in and help us. Help us, Lord. Between now and whenever we can get the vaccine, oh God, we don't know what's going to happen yet. Be with every home, be with every school, oh God, every church. 
even when we don't invite you in, oh God, come on in anyway. Oh God, we need hope for tomorrow. We need our faith to be strengthened, to be built up, oh God, right now. Some, oh God, have taken their lives. They came, haven't been able to deal with it, oh Lord. Come on in, step in and make your way known. Oh, hallelujah to you, the Lamb of God. Now, oh God, as we to go forth in this service, Keep ministering to us. We want to hear your still, small voice. Right there in our homes, we can hear you, oh God, at our table. We can hear you, oh God, in our bedroom, at our desk table, oh God. We just want to hear from you right now. Yes, we do, Lord. Oh God, as we go forth now, we're going to continue to lean and depend upon you. We acknowledge you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said where they were, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, come on, church. Come on, come on, church. Praise Him. Can you do all things? Claim it right now. Who does what? I'm claiming it right now. Do it, Lord. Everybody, come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. I can, I can.
God for that musical selection. Amen. Amen. I have a little short word to share with you for the message for this Sunday morning. I'm going to go back into the Old Testament. We're going to look at the psalmist out of the 31st book of Psalms. Psalm 31, Psalm 31, reading from verse 9 to verse 15. Psalm 31, beginning with verse 9, and ending with verse 15. Reading out of the New King James Version translation. Psalm 31, beginning with verse Verse 9, it reads, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye wastes away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sigh. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. I am a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel for I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side while they take counsel together against me. They scheme to take away my life. But, 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 but as for me, but as for Sylvester Everton Chase Jr., put your name in that. But as for me, I trust in you, O oh Lord. I say, you are my God, my times, my times are in your hand. My times are in your, your hand. The word of God for us the people of God, thanks be to God, amen, amen, and amen. 
The psalmist says in that 15th verse, the beginning of verse 15, 15a, my times are in your hand. My times. Sylvester Everton Chase Jr., my, my times, Lord, are in your, your hand. Two thousand and twenty has taught me and two or three other people that we are not in control of anything. We made plans to start out the year, made our resolution. Now, after so many things have happened, we can't even remember what resolutions we made. For we have found out in this year, if we haven't in years prior, that our times are in God's hand. Isn't that right? Our times. Not picking on him, but the President Trump, his plan was to, to be the President of the United States for another four years. He had his campaign worked up, going out, putting out a word as long as he was putting out a word also. But they found out that even an incumbent president found out that his time and what he wants to do is not in his hand. But it is in God's hand. We can recount the votes until Christmas. But in the end, he'll have to say that my time wasn't in my hand like I thought. With all my influence and all my money and all the pressure I can put on people, I, I don't control everything either. <laughs> my times are in what? Your hands, oh God. Well, my brothers and sisters, I just want us to focus upon that on this morning. The psalmist writes there in that 15th, 15th verse of that 31st chapter of a song. And really starting in verse 14, the psalmist says, but as for me, I trust in you, O oh Lord. This year has taught me and two or three others that you've got to put all of our trust in God. We don't know when we're going to be up and when we are going to be down. We don't know when we're going to get a job or not have a job. We don't know when we are going to be well and when we are going to be sick. But I, 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 I trust in you, O oh Lord. Well, you thought things were going along pretty well for you. And that you didn't need any help. And some people's going around saying, I don't need anybody, but... 2020 has taught me and two or three others. You can't make it by yourself. And though I can call upon you, but I really got to total, put my total trust in God. Oh my God, I said that you are my God. 
You are my God. Somebody needs to declare, who is your God? Is it your money? Is it your status? Is it who you know? Is it who you control? Well, I just stepped by. I just want to declare that, Lord, you are my, my God today. Hello, somebody. You are my God. I, I, I trust in you, huh? Because I have learned what that my time, my times are in what? Your hand. Woo. Oh, God, today. My time. I, I thought I was going to get that big promotion this year, but it didn't happen. My time's off in your hand. Listen up to this. We said that our times are in the Lord's hand. But re listen, as I said this word to you. As you walk with God. Oh, I hope somebody's walking with God in 2020 right now. You might didn't start off the year walking, but I, I hope you, you know, find out that you need someone to walk with. And as you walk with God, you will find out that you spend more time waiting than receiving. Woo. As you what? Walk with God. What did I say? You'll spend more time waiting than receiving. Waiting to get well. Waiting for your finances to get right. Waiting to find a job. Waiting for another stimulus check. Waiting to find out if things are going to be all right. We are in a what? Waiting mode right now. Waiting for the vaccine. Waiting to find out who's gonna really get it first. Waiting to see if I'm gonna be able to get it in another year. Waiting to find out how things are gonna be for my child. Waiting to see how things are going to be for my grandchild. Waiting. Oh, we are in a what? Waiting mode. As you walk with God, you'll find out that you find more time waiting than you do what? Receiving. Can I get a witness out and all? <laughs> ah. Uh, I just want to get some, uh, hey, I just asked for the north, hey, man, I, I didn't get, yeah, I had a whole, I thought I'd been clapping out north and shouting, hey, amen. But listen up to this, I, I said you spend more time, what, waiting than you do, what, receiving. When you receive what you are waiting for, come on, I'm going somewhere. You begin waiting for something else after you receive what you're waiting for. Whoop. Hmm? When you receive what you're what? Waiting for. You begin waiting for something else. As you receive one package, then you are waiting for another package to come. Isn't that right in life, huh? We are in a what? Waiting mode. After we receive, then we start waiting on something else. Lady told me this week, I'm waiting on a, another husband, Reverend. <laughs> I said, well, good sister. I said, what you mean? I said, she said, I done had three, but I'm waiting on number four, huh? She's in a what? 
waiting mode, huh? See, after you receive what you want, then you go into another, what, waiting mode. But now here's, here's the clincher here. Our times are what in what God's hand? We are in a waiting mode. Nothing has really turned out the way we thought it was going to be. But the psalmist says, we got to learn to wait. We got to learn to wait. What do you mean we got to learn to wait? I want you to learn. Come on. This is another point, too. You got to learn while you're waiting to wait with joy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, come on, Pastor. Come on here. I said, now we are waiting. We're always in that waiting mode. And, and, and sometimes that waiting, hey, we've been there and do it for a night. But what joy comes in the morning, sometimes that night can be long. You got to wait. The wait might be a few months. The wait might be a few years, but you got to learn to wait. But as you are waiting, huh, knowing that your time is in God's hands, you got to learn to what? Wait with joy. J-O-Y, joy. If you don't learn to wait with joy while you are waiting, you know what would happen? You will live in frustration. People are frustrated. Whew. You think change is going to come overnight. Reform is not going to happen. The new legislative session, they're not, they're not going to change everything right away. But you know, in your situation that you are in, you know the job that you were praying for, that you've been waiting on, you got to learn to enjoy where you are. Because if you don't, you'll be living in what? Frustration. You're waiting for that, for that raise, and y'all frustrated. You better try to make do with what you have. Amen. Huh? Or else you will be living in what? Frustration. Wait with joy. You know, in the Bible, if we go to Galatians chapter 6, as we have done in the past, verse 9, Galatians 6 and 9, it says, let us not be weary in what well doing. <laughs> I, I said that's in the Bible. In the, you do know that's in the New Testament. Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well doing. For in due, due season, we shall reap if we faint not. <laughs> where, where, where are you going with that, Pastor? Listen up, listen up, listen up. Due season. For in due season, it says, we will reap if we what faint not. Due season. I'm talking about due season. It's when God knows the time is right. Huh? Due season is when God knows the time is right. <laughs> Not when you think it is. Ooh. Ooh, that sounds good to my ears. I'm going to say it to myself again, all right? Due season is when God knows the time is right. Not when you think it is. My coach over there, Coach Shores, can tell you that you, you, you didn't get that hit record right away, that hit recording. You didn't get it right away, did you, huh? It didn't, you didn't get it when, when, you, when you thought you should get it, huh? But it came when God said it was right for you. Huh? When God says it's right, huh? And that don't mean we don't stop doing what we're doing and doing it well, but some things are not going to happen right away. But in due season, 
God knows when the time is right, not when you think it is. That lets you know you're not in control. Huh? Listen up. God has a set time for accomplishing things in your life. God has a set time for accomplishing things in your what? Life. Now, I know we are living in a microwave age, and we want things right away. But you are going to find out if you live another year or two, that you're not going to get a lot of things in life until God says, he wants you to have it. Isn't that right? God has a set time for accomplishing things in your life. So you might as well settle down right now this morning and wait because that's when it will happen and not before until God says that it's time. Woo! Are we, are we getting this message huh? out south? I ain't heard nothing about south. What about west? Northwest. Northeast. All right. Northeast. Well, I got northeast people. Amen. All right. God has a set time for accomplishing what things in your life. So we got to learn to wait with joy and settle down and wait until God says, it will happen. Remember this. God knows what you need. See, sometimes you, you're asking for things that you are not ready for. And a lot of times you veto God, amen. I'll vote him and say, I'm ready for it now. And then you get it, and you wonder why I wasn't successful. You wasn't ready. God was trying to prepare you, but you wanted it on your time and on your, your terms. God knows what you need. All right? Now, you, you might not need to be president of a four, Fortune 500 company. Isn't that right? You might not need to be the mayor of Austin, Texas. God knows what you need. And not only does he know what you need, he knows when you need it. God knows when you what, what you need, and he knows when you need it. Now, sometimes I hear people say, boy, I thought I would have had this 20 years ago, but it finally, I got this. But God says that this is the time I wanted you to have it. You wasn't ready then. I know what you need. I know when you need it. And then, and that third reasoning in that God knows how to get it to you. <laughs> I said, God knows how to get it to you, what you need. God knows what? What you need. God knows when you need it. And God knows how to get it to you. Woo. Only thing I'm trying to say, my time is in God's hand. God knows what you need, when you need it, and how to get it. And someone right now, probably on the deep east side, is asking, what am I supposed to do while I am waiting, Lord? What am I supposed to do, Pastor, while I am waiting on what I've been wanting? And it seems like it's going on forever. And it, it, it seems like I, 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 God is not going to answer my prayer. And you know, 
God knows when you need it and what you need. It might not be what you need, and he'll know when to get it to you. But listen to this. Why you are waiting? What are you supposed to do? It says it there in verse 14 in that 31st chapter of Psalm. The psalm that says, but as for me, I trust him. Have you heard that? Now, God knows my time is in his hand. People are telling me, well, you should have had that. God knows what I need, when I need it, and how he's going to give it to me, huh? But while I'm going through that waiting of wanting certain things in life, my way and when I want it, you need to learn to say, I'm going to just sit back and enjoy the moment that I'm in and just trust God. Woo. Woo. My, my, my times are in your hand. One Bible scholar I heard over at uh, Terrytown United Methodist Church said, God has taught me to keep living the life I now have while I'm waiting for the things that are in my heart to come to pass. Woo! That's so rich. I'm going to just say it one more time anyway. While I am waiting and I'm trusting him, one Bible scholar, I said that I heard over at what? Terrytown United Methodist Church said, God has taught me to keep living the life I now have while I am waiting for the things that are in my heart to come to pass. Oh! I just got to go on living the life that I have. What? Now! Things that I hope to and won't. I don't know when they're going to come, but I got to learn to just wait. But I got to learn to wait with what? Joy. You see, we become so intent on trying to give birth to the next thing that we neither enjoy nor take care of the things at hand. Don't say that one time. I know one or two people want me to say that again. And I'm, I'm not. We become, we, I, you, me, so intent on trying to give birth to the next thing that are in our heart to come to pass. We become so intent on trying to give birth to the next thing that we neither enjoy nor take care of the things at hand. Huh. Woo! You might not never be the supervisor. You better enjoy being the employee with a job. Huh? You're trying to give birth to the next thing of when I'm going to really enjoy. Might not be bishop, I might not be presiding elder, but I better enjoy where I am now. And take care of the things where I am now and enjoy life now. My times are in your hand, Lord. I got to enjoy time now. Well, life is short. Life is Precious. Things might not never run on your time schedule, but I got to get in tune with God's schedule because I know that my times are in his hand. Well, my brothers and sisters, you can miss out on a lot of joy 
And that's why I think some of you are frustrated. You done missed out on a lot of joy already in your life because you're waiting for the next thing, trying to birth something new, but enjoy where you are right now. You have missed out on a lot of joy by trying to give birth outside of God's timing. <laughs> you have what tried to give birth to something that is outside of God's time. My time, Lord. My times are in what? Your hand, Lord. Well, Lord, since my times are in your hand, this is what I am going to do. I'm just going to enjoy where I am now. Are you happy? You got a job. But I'm not the top on the list for being a supervisor. Well, you better learn to enjoy where you are what? Now. We need to realize this as we close. Enjoy where you are. Joy. Enjoy where you are for a while you are waiting to get to where you want to be. Did you hear what I said? Enjoy where you are now while you're waiting for where you what? Want to be. Russell, coach, stay on that guitar. Enjoy it now. Ramona, play those drums. With joy. Enjoy it right now. Well, I'm so glad that I'm where I am because my time is in God's, God's hand. And I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the Lord. And I have learned that while I have waited on certain things in life, that I have learned to wait because I'm going to be waiting longer than receiving. Well, you spend what? More time what? Waiting than you do receiving. So get up. And shout right now. I'm glad where I'm live. I'm glad for the family that I have, for the job that I have now, to be able to breathe right now. Hello, somebody. But while I am waiting, I'm waiting with joy. But when I receive what the Lord yet has in store for me, I'm going to shout with gladness. I'm going to shout with joy. My times are in his hand. He's going to say, if I keep enjoying where I am and doing my best, well done, <laughs> my good and what faithful servant. You've been what faithful over few things. Now come on up, and I'll make you ruler over much. Well, my times are in his hands. I'm going to run my race. I'm going to keep the faith. For I know there is a what? Crown of righteousness. Ah, oh, that is awaiting me. 
Well, you are my God. I trust in you. My times are in your hands. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let the people of God, wherever you are, say amen. Hallelujah. My time are in your hands, Lord. Now, the invitation to Christian discipleship, your time is in God's hands. This might be the moment that he's pushing you to rededicate, recommit, to come and give of your life really to him. He knows, he knows what you need right now, <clears throat> when to give it to you and how to get it to you. Your time is in his hands. Come now. Where are you? Where are you? I just want you to come and just touch. Touch your device, your screen. The ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife. To do what? And if you feel so all alone, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And your house is not a home. Come. You need someone. You need someone. I tell you, you can't make it by yourself. If it seems life isn't fair, oh, what, what? and there's all those lonely days and nights Yes, Lord, yes, Lord And things just won't turn out right And you need someone to care And someone to just be there You need someone I need someone
my friends I give you Jesus Ah uh, yeah Hallelujah Miss LaMonica Lewis I give you Jesus Amen. But do you receive him right now where you yes, are? Yes Lord Open up and say, Lord, come in. <laughs> come in, Lord. If you find anything right now in my life that shouldn't be, take it out. Help me, Lord, to be patient. Help me to be more loving and comforting, forgiving, oh, Lord. If I receive you, this might be the moment that I have a true transformation. If you just open up and say, Lord, I thought I knew you. And the pardon of my sin, but right here, right now, I'm experiencing something that I never experienced before on the inside. Mm. I said, mm. you know when I need it. Other times I, I, I went through the motion of receiving you because they said it looked right, mm -hmm. that it was time. But right now, oh God, it's you and I. In 2020, oh Lord, I'm learning that my times are in your, your hand. I was to extend and what? Yours to accept on this Sunday morning, November the 15th, 2020. And 20. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Ooh, what a time I had in the Lord today. Wow. I enjoyed myself. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I'm finding out with my ooh, I don't control <laughs> anything. All right. Uh ooh, that was a good word, wasn't it? That was a good word. Thank you, coach. All right. <laughs> now, uh we already told you to lift up the Edison family, Horace, yes, loss of his wife and the son, Michael and Matthew, all the extended family members, her brother, her sisters, never ready to say goodbye. Send a word to Brother Horace and family. Send a word. You might not have time to talk to everybody right now. Amen. He's, he's getting it together. Amen. And you can just send a word. We will let you know when the service will be. We will be here at Wesley United Methodist Church. Pray for all of those who stand in the need of prayer. Don't forget, I asked my Monday evening prayer, prayer team to pray for every care, caregiver that you know. Whatever caregiver you know, lift them up in prayer, call them by name. Can y'all do that? every caregiver that you know because they need strength and help too as we in national family caregiver much as we go forth continue to trust the psalm that says i'm gonna trust you oh god while i'm waiting with joy Till I hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on, let us close it out by saying, God, God is what? God is so good. Come on. North, south, east, and west, together. God is, God is so good. I said,
Grace Jr. And now as we go forth, remember that God is good. And that most of all, I want you to remember the word that says, my times, my life is in God's hand. I don't know when I'm going to receive some things, how I'm going to get it, but God knows what I need and when I need to receive it. So until we come together again, keep trusting and believing. Give him the power of your spirit in Jesus' name one more time. Give so what? God is so good. North, south, east and west. Up in the air. Out on the sea. God is. He's so what? To who? To who? Me. Praise God. See you next Sunday. Amen. Hello, Wesley family and friends. It has been quite a while since we've done an update on the financial status of our church, so we thought we'd take a few minutes today to do so. As I thought through the best way to present this information, one of Reverend Chase's recent sermons came to mind. On October the 10th, Reverend Chase delivered a sermon entitled, Settle Down. In that sermon, he said, and I quote, the Lord provides comforts to you, not just for your benefit. He wants to extend those same comforts that he has provided you to others through you. We are not the source of those comfort to others. We are a conduit to extending that comfort from God to others. I believe I can truthfully say that on that Sunday, Reverend Chase was literally preaching to the choir because through your continued giving, that is exactly what Wesley members have been doing. Our year to date giving is not where we projected it would be at this point in the year, but because we are not meeting in the church, neither are our expenses. So the net of all of this is that we are slightly ahead of where we plan to be. Yet, I can confidently say that our ministries and auxiliaries have remained vibrant and active. Our children and youth programs, our prayer shawl, music and Stephen ministries, our outreach ministries and evangelism ministries, our Sunday school and Bible studies, and our veterans groups are all active and continue to do the work of furthering God's kingdom. So thank you, Wesley. I cannot stress enough how blessed we are to have a congregation like you. So continue to be blessed. And may the Lord keep each of you safe until we can meet again. Thank you.